I'm joined now by retired Army Major John Spencer, Chair of Urban Warfare Studies with the Madison Policy Forum. Um, I have so many questions. I'm going to try to get through them all in the short time that we're going to have together. Uh, but I want to start with that refugee crisis because, you know, th this is a complicated situation, but part of it is this huge outflow of people who are Ukrainian and non-Ukrainian who are studying Ukraine out into these neighboring countries. How does that complicate the neighboring countries' um, sort of attitude toward what's happening in Ukraine and the logistics and what they have to do? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a human, so I want all those civilians in as most protected places they can. But that this is all war is bad, but this this is going to be really bad because of the humanitarian crisis that we know is happening. And unfortunately, it's going to get 10 times worse. So, yeah, those refugees are going to need assistance and, and the neighboring countries are going to have to take those in. And, and it's going to cause a lot of problems in each an individual country is doing what they can. But it's awful, Joy. Yeah. And let's now talk about um, what's going on inside of Ukraine. That map that we put up earlier, maybe we can pull it back up again. It showed a lot of that yellow color um, where the Russians are advancing. And I see Kiev right there, very, very close to the pink, um, where you're seeing the Russians moving in and occupying space. Um, what do you make of the fact that the president um, is, is, is remaining in Ukraine? He's very close to where those troops are advancing. Um, he's apparently determined to remain in Kyiv regardless. I is that wise at this stage? Absolutely. He's going to go down in history as one of the great leaders. If he would have fled or if he flees, it's, it's lost. War is more than just military force. It's about the will of the people. He is, he is everything. He is why they have resisted so strongly. I mean, he's going to go down as a Churchill, a, a, a Washington that is such an amazing leader. It's critical that he stays safe, um, but that he stays in the country, and he's doing that. And those messages, Joy, that's why they fought so hard. Yeah, indeed. He is, he's, he is already legend. Let, let's talk about what Ukraine can do. Uh, Russia's got like 90 percent of its forces that it had arrayed around that country inside the country now. Just even looking at that map, it looks like they've got enough to go in and destroy and bombard cities and kill a lot of people, but not necessarily enough to hold a country of 44 million people. Um, so, so that's a two-part question. Number one, what do you make of their strategy so far? They do seem to be stalling. The Ukrainians are bragging about having brought down, you know, not a small number of their aircraft. Um, you know, they're saying they've downed 29 Russian aircraft, 29 helicopters, seven air defense units. We're not confirming that, but that is what they're saying. What can the Ukrainians do at this point about that long tank uh, convoy that's right outside Kyiv? Um, what can they do at this point militarily to fight back? And do you think the Russians have enough troops in that country to really hold it? Yeah, that's a great question. So first off, the Ukrainians need to keep doing what they're doing. Even in all that red up on that map, the Russians don't control nothing. Uh, maybe they think they do, but that's not the way this is working out for them at all. So they have to keep hitting the Russian hordes wherever and in, in any way they can. That stalled target or that stalled convoy is a, a great target. And they but they have to be safe about it, right? So th this is their ability to continue to resist because the more time Russia can't achieve what it wants to do, which is take Kiev, this is all about an urban objective, a strategic objective, that he wants to take Kiev and instill a Russian-friendly government. So the more the Ukrainians do, the more they can stop that. If as long every day that goes by, when Ukraine doesn't lose, it's winning. They're running out of time. They're running out of food, water, gas, He's running out of political support in his own country. Now, what can they do more is they need to make sure that Russia hits a wall of concrete. Our president said that they hit a wall of strength in the Ukrainian people, and they did. Now, I'm an urban warfare specialist, just as an old soldier who's been studying this for a long time. Having done my own urban combat, the reason they're shelling like this is because they're scared. Nobody wants to enter the hell of urban combat, and that's what— this is about information war, and that's what they Russians have to believe that they're entering hell, and the Ukrainians have to believe, which I think they should. They are not as disadvantaged as everybody keeps saying. The urban train is the great equalizer. They can put up barriers and make it turn into weeks and months for them to possibly take. So to answer the first question, yeah. Russia didn't bring what it needs to take those major urban areas. 
Let me let me ask you this, and, and as, uh, to, to let our viewers know what you're watching there is the the train coming into Budapest uh, with the people who are leaving Ukraine, getting to safety in Hungary. So you can see them coming off the train. Um, so that is what you're seeing on the screen right now. So on this question of insurgency, the, the, the fact, as you said, that they didn't bring enough to hold that country. First of all, they're creating nothing, no kind of goodwill. So there will be an insurgency. Ukrainians have said very clearly they're, they're willing to fight to the last man. They're never going to allow themselves to be annexed uh, to Russia. And so I, I guess then the, the next question is, how do you see that insurgency playing out? If, um, God forbid, Russians take control of Kyiv, how do the Ukrainians then resist that? Um, I know our own experience in Iraq says that you can resist, you know, a, a population that's determined to resist can resist and get you out of there. We've seen it in South Africa, we've seen it in other places. But how do they resist if the Russians actually take control of the city? Yeah, so just my personal opinion. One, I don't think they brought enough to take and definitely didn't bring enough to hold. To, to fight a counterinsurgency, the numbers you need are, are astronomical compared to the size of the populations you're trying to control. And this is, you know, this isn't Iraq. And, and like you said, I, I two combat tours, been, experienced a lot of insurgency, but that was maybe 1% of the population. This will be you know, giant percents of the population that will continue to resist. If Russia tries to, even if it, God forbid, which I hope that doesn't, they, they take Kiev and instill the government, they're going to face years. If yeah. um, I don't think they can sustain even being there with the insurgency that they've faced. Yeah. It, absolutely. And I want to thank you, um, John's, uh, Major John Spencer. Uh, I want to thank you. 